On this episode of China Uncensored, Marxism for Journalists 101. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your surgeon of cutting satire, Chris Chappell. Finally, journalism in China is in for a change. For too long, Chinese media has been a joke. It's just been too biased to be taken seriously. I mean, look at this article. Clearly, if China's state-run media wants to be seen as serious journalism, the article should have looked something like this. You see, the problem with China's state-run media is that it isn't one-sided enough. It just doesn't show enough unconditional support for the decisions of the Chinese Communist Party. That's why, according to the South China Morning Post, every one of China's official 307,000 journalists, producers, and editors have been ordered to take at least two days of classes in Marxism. Now, everyone already has to take Marxism in school, but you need a refresher every once in a while, you know? If you don't brush up on your ruthless totalitarian ideology every five years or so, you start to forget. And that's when mistakes happen. Chinese leader Xi Jinping has been saying there needs to be greater unity in public speech. That's probably why he's also been campaigning against internet rumors or reporters causing troubles by exposing corruption. Look, Xi Jinping knows corruption is rampant in China. Why do journalists have to splash it all over the headlines when they could be talking about his pretty wife? It's not the job of journalists to expose corruption. It's the government's job to occasionally hold some high-profile trials and have an execution here or there without touching any of the deeply rooted systemic problems. That's the way you preserve one-party rule. So what can one expect from a Marxism class? Well, for instance, at Tsinghua University, Zhou Xiaoming, Tibetan specialist and government consultant, will tell you how the Dalai Lama is a secessionist traitor and that Tibet has always been a part of China. No, it hasn't. You'll also learn to avoid the westernized concept of journalism, like the pathetic idea of press independence and reliance on investigation and facts. To make sure journalists really understand how important these Marxism classes are, Qiu Shi, a bi-monthly political theory magazine that the CCP's Central Party School publishes, wrote this article to tell reporters to be aware of their duties, like making sure the government doesn't look bad because of too much negative opinion. I mean, the Communist Party is the best thing to happen to the Chinese people. How come some non-conforming media reports lead people to think otherwise? That's why journalism students in China are taught that the party must guide the public opinion. But the party line is a little hard to follow sometimes, especially because it keeps changing. So hopefully these Marxism classes will help journalists hit the marks. So do you remember last week when I did an episode about China apologist Eric X. Lee giving a TED talk that turned into propaganda about why one party rule in China is so much better than democracy? One of his points about all the progress made in China was that the Chinese regime has eased up on restrictions in the media and that you're free to criticize the government online without repercussion. You know, I think Eric might make a great Chinese journalist. He's able to completely ignore fact and spout lies with a straight face, and he didn't even have to take a class to do it. So I think what should be clear now is that the Communist Party is not going to change. Some people thought the new leaders will bring reform and make things better, but these Marxism classes show that the party will just keep trying to claw back the control it's been losing. But is that really possible? The party may have already lost its legitimacy as far as tens of millions of Chinese people are concerned. I wonder if it's because of some nationwide movement that would make for a good topic for tomorrow's China Uncensored. Hmm, let me stroke my chin about that one. Uh, that's Qin Shi Huang, the founder of the Qin Dynasty. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the Twitter and Facebook page. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.